In the bustling city of London, where many nobles live, there is a white-haired girl named Wisteria, begging the nobles passing by to give her some money. The person standing next to her was the priest. Every night, if she didn't earn money that day, he would scold and beat her. Wisteria could only sadly eat the moldy bread. Although her current life is very difficult, it is not too boring because every night when she knocks on the window three times, a demon will appear. His name is Marbus. When the priest saw that she was still not sleeping, he rushed up and beat her because if she didn't wake up early tomorrow, he wouldn't get any money. Even though Marbus is a demon, seeing the actions of a priest using orphans to beg for food made him disgusted. However, Wisteria did not think so because the priest gave her food every day. A month ago, Marbus was a demon, so normal people could not see him. He was very bored with his immortal life as an invisible person. That day, he caught Wisteria asking for money from the nobles and was pushed down. Marbus wondered if she would just accept living a life like this. He thought that, as usual, no one could see him, but unexpectedly, Wisteria turned to face him and was pale and sweating profusely. That night, when he went to Wisteria's place, she was worried that he would take her soul. But in reality, Marbus was just curious because she could see him. From that day on, every day she looked forward to the night so he could tell stories to her. Somewhere in London, a demon attacked a boy named Snow. He is a demon slayer, so he easily dodged the attack and shot it dead. Currently, he is working with his superiors to track down a high-level demon. While telling stories to Wisteria, Marbus transformed into human form. In this form, people can see him, but he doesn't like it because many girls will fall in love with him. The next morning, while Wisteria was eating, the priest announced that she was about to be sold to a noble. At night, Wisteria trembled and remembered her brother. He was sold to a noble. Since then, the two have been unable to contact each other. She asked Marbus to help her escape this place, but he refused because if she wanted to ask a demon for help, she needed to pay a corresponding price. Wisteria was willing to pay with her soul, but he still refused. Demons actually want to take human souls to make up for their lifespan. But Marbus is an immortal demon that roams everywhere and does not need human souls. Wisteria fell into despair. The next day, she changed her clothes and got on the horse carriage to leave. Marbus observed the whole process without any emotion. That afternoon, Marbus saw the Knight of the Cross Sword trying to enter the priest's house. Wisteria was brought to the noble's house. He said that from now on she would become his child. He then led her to her room. But when she opened the door, Wisteria was scared because the inside was full of torture instruments. Snow beat the priest and wanted him to reveal the demon's whereabouts because he had followed the demon's trace and found it here. The priest said there was a white-haired girl who talked to herself all day, but now she was sold to a noble who liked to torture children. Marbus stood on the roof and heard everything, then became angry and emitted a large demonic aura. Snow's demonic energy measuring device is going out of control. Meanwhile, Wisteria is feeling scared and runs away. But she tripped and was caught by him. He was about to put some scars on her face when Marbus appeared. He threw out a bag of gold to buy back Wisteria. Suddenly, at this moment, his body began to crack. Wisteria bit the noble and ran away towards Marbus. Seeing that the noble wanted to chase, Marbus used his hair to throw the noble away. He told Wisteria that his life had been very boring before, but talking to her every day wasn't bad. At this time, a dark demon appeared. It turned out that the noble had made a deal with the demon. It launched tentacles that attacked Marbus, injuring him. Marbus knew it was impossible to fight with this form. Wisteria ran in front of Marbus and said that the most precious thing she had were her eyes. She used it to sign a contract with him. A huge source of energy was transferred into Marbus' body. The dark demon panicked when he saw the true form of Marbus, who was one of the 13 Calamites of the Wasteland. Marbus cast a fire spell to destroy the dark demon and then carried the blind Wisteria outside. After the two of them left and Snow went to interrogate the demon, he did not receive any useful information. The next morning, Marbus gave Wisteria a walking stick and took her to the house of someone who had previously repaid him. He told Wisteria to prepare to clean the house but remembered that she was blind, forcing him to clean alone. He diligently cleaned up every single thing. Very quickly, the house was sparkling clean. Unlike demons, humans need to eat and drink. So Marbus took Wisteria into town to buy food. Before that, he took her shopping for clothes. While Wisteria was choosing clothes, she accidentally touched a girl. The girl introduced herself as Diana, the daughter of a noble. She was a bit curious when Wisteria was blind and walked alone. Wisteria explained that the person accompanying her would return shortly. Diana invites her to shop for clothes together. She told her bodyguard to go somewhere for a while. Outside, Marbus is walking around and plans to pick up Wisteria. Suddenly, he felt a bit uncomfortable and saw the bodyguard come out of the shop and transform into the form of a demon. 
The two of them are acquaintances. Like Marbas, Nabarius is one of the 13 Calamites of the Wasteland. When the two girls finished shopping and went outside, they saw two of them waiting. Marbas then took Wisteria to a restaurant for lunch. She was a bit worried because she was afraid she would break something. Marbas thought it was right, so he fed her directly. Although a bit shy, she still accepted. Wisteria thinks it's more fun to eat together. In the past, she and her brother often shared food together. Even though it was just bread, she was still very happy. Marbus thought for a while, then joined her in eating, even though it was unnecessary for demons. When she finished eating, Wisteria happily shed tears because it had been a long time since she could eat with someone. He told her that he had signed a contract with her, so he would be there to take care of her until she died. That day, Marbas went out and thought about what Nabarius had said that recently one of the Thirteen Calamites, Asteroth, had been brutally murdered. He doesn't know anyone who has enough power to kill her. Snow accidentally passed by and saw that Marbas was very similar in appearance to the nobleman mentioned. Marbas also realized this and went into a cafe. Snow also came in and sat at the same table. He said directly that he was Wisteria's brother. This time, he came to take her home. Marbas found this to be a coincidence. He used his hair to tie Snow's hands and told him to meet in the forest. He returned home and told Wisteria that he would move out and that someone would come help them. Snow saw that Wisteria had gone blind, causing him great pain. He directly revealed his identity and opened fire at Marbas, but Marbas easily caught the bullet. Wisteria stood up to stop them, declaring that if they fought, she would be angry because she loved them both. Snow thinks she is being deceived by the demon for his entertainment. Marbas said that he had signed a contract with Wisteria, and that her eyes were the sacrifice. Snow was startled because if the Knights of the Sword Cross knew about this, they would kill Wisteria too. He decided to kill Marbas to end this damn contract. He continuously opened fire, but it was all in vain. Snow ran into the forest, planning to use a special bullet that could kill demons. Marbas did not compromise anymore and used fire magic to burn the forest. Snow was lucky to avoid it. In the smoke, he jumped out and shot Marbas. As the bullet was flying, Wisteria was running towards Marbas and fell into the path of the bullet. Marbas did not hesitate to shield her. Snow could not believe that a demon was protecting humans. Wisteria trembled and said she rushed over because she wanted to be with him. In this miserable life, only Marbas was there to talk to her. She begged Snow to forgive them. He was very confused and didn't know what to do, so he shouted. The next day, Snow made his decision to let the two go and make a false report to the commander. He agreed to leave Wisteria in Marba's care. At night in a forest, a girl was running away for something when she ran to a lake. From the water, an extremely large demon appeared and swallowed her. The next morning, Wisteria and Marbas left London for a bustling city. As soon as they arrived, a mysterious girl and her demon were stalking them. The little demon took advantage of the ability of others to not see him to pick Marba's pocket, but he chose the wrong target. Marba's wanted to know who made the contract with it because Wisteria had been having a lot of trouble recently, so that person might have connections with others. The girl who had made the contract could no longer stand by and watch her demon being bullied, so she walked out. Marba's forced the girl to apologize by giving Wisteria a meal. The girl led them to a small restaurant, but no one came to serve her. She thought that everyone knew she was a thief, so they ignored her. She gave Marbas her wallet so he could order himself, but he noticed something. In the evening, Marbas told Wisteria to leave this city the next day because there was a lot of trouble here. Unfortunately, the next morning, Marbas's body suddenly couldn't move because he had transformed into his human form too much. Wisteria wanted him to rest for a day, and her stomach growled with hunger. At this moment, little demon Mori and Harriet stopped by. Harriet laughed and invited Wisteria to eat with them. Marbas flatly refused, but Wisteria's stomach kept growling, making her blush shyly. He had to agree to let her go. Before that, he reminded her to return early and then used a strand of hair to tie Wisteria's finger. It could warn him when she was in danger. So Wisteria went out with Harriet. They go out and eat together. In the afternoon, they watched the sunset together by the lake. Harriet told Wisteria about the first time she met Mori. Since her parents died, she has lived by stealing money. One time, while stealing, someone discovered her and she was beaten up. At that time, she was desperate and bored with this life when Mori appeared. Since then, the two have spent happy times together. Because it was getting dark, Harriet was about to take Wisteria home. But Mori wanted to leave Wisteria behind. 
As soon as he finished speaking, the giant demon appeared from the lake, and the hare in Wisteria's hand sent a warning to Marbus. The demon reached out to capture Harriet when a gunshot rang out. Kate and Teknami walked over and introduced themselves as the Knights of the Sword Cross. Then Kate fired a shot at the demon, then Teknami jumped up and slashed its head off. Seeing that the situation was not good, Harriet wanted to take Wisteria away, but was stopped by Teknami. He felt that Wisteria had more magic than a normal person and thought she was a demon, so he planned to kill her. Suddenly, a wind surrounded her, and Marbas appeared. Marbas just waved his hand and caused the ground where Kate was standing to collapse. Teknami rushed forward and slashed Marbas's hair, making him a little excited. That was not enough, Marbas only attacked from the side, and the sword was broken. The wounded Kate shot at Mori to threaten that if Marbas did not spare them, she would shoot the two girls. Marbas stopped. After the two knights left, Marbas wanted Mori to explain why he wanted to harm Wisteria. Mori was seriously injured and told Harriet that he had previously tricked her into making a contract with him. After she dies, he will take her soul. But after living together, Mori loved Harriet. Until one day, Mori and Harriet passed by this lake when the demon appeared and killed Harriet. Because according to the contract, Harriet's soul belonged to Mori, so the demon could not take Harriet's soul. Harriet also realized that recently she was not hungry at all and that her money was never empty. But she didn't blame Mori at all. In order for Mori to continue living, she dissolved her body and became one with Mori so that Mori could heal his wounds. Mori hugged Harriet's hat and burst into tears. Wisteria and Marbas then continued on their way to another land. In cold weather, Wisteria is extremely weak. Just heard that this place is very close to Diana's Black Bell family. Her eyes lit up, and she wanted to go there to play, but Marbas did not agree. He did not want to see Nabrius again at all. After walking a little further, Wisteria could no longer hold on and fell down. Marbas still doesn't understand what's going on. Seeing her panting face, he realized something was unusual. In Diana's mansion, Nabrius sensed an extremely powerful demon approaching. He jumped outside and saw Marbas carrying Wisteria. Nabrius thought he came to fight, but Marbas wanted to save Wisteria, startling him. After Wisteria was examined, Diana scolded Marbas for letting her go in such cold weather. Nabrius advised Marbas to learn about the human way of life after making a contract with them. Right now, the Sword Cross headquarters are very busy. Their commander has returned and is about to carry out a new mission. The commander informed his subordinates that they would purge the Black Bell family. That family has a demon that can be stronger than the demon hunted before, so the commander will participate in this mission. Wisteria got better and woke up. Diana bluntly asked Wisteria to leave because of some problems. Wisteria really wanted to know why. Diana said that more than 350 years ago, her family's ancestors made a contract with a demon. So the next child in her family had the ability to see demons. Her family serves the royal family with the task of negotiating with others on behalf of the royal family. Thanks to her family's ability to see demons, those who made deals with demons who wanted to assassinate the royal family were discovered and captured. But recently, a force has been threatening her family, known as the Knights of the Sword Cross. They wanted to replace her family to work for the royal family. Recently, her brothers, having failed their mission, committed suicide to punish themselves. That night, when Marbas came to Wisteria's room, he said that he was a demon who didn't know much about humans, so if she had any problems, she should tell him. Wisteria was very happy and agreed. Nabrius suddenly entered the room and reminded the two to leave soon. In Diana's room, four henchmen of the Sword Cross Commander appeared. The guy holding the scythe wanted to take her head but was stopped by Nabrius and sent flying out. Meanwhile, Marbas was carrying Wisteria out of the mansion. Wisteria begged Marbas a lot because she wanted to witness everything. He agreed because he thought everything would be over now. As he guessed, Nabrius single-handedly defeated the four knights of the Sword Cross. Suddenly, light swords appeared and rushed at Diana, but Nabrius used his body to block them all. Those swords belonged to the commander of the Sword Cross. The commander rushed forward, but Nabrius was still okay, calmly pulling the swords out of his body to attack the commander. But he didn't understand why the commander was unharmed. The commander found Nabrius unimpressed. He picked up the sword and attacked Nabrius. Marbus froze when he saw Nabrius being overwhelmed. He rushed to slap Nabrius in the face and shouted, How dare you let a human get the best of you? Nabrius explained that the knight was not human, but Marbus did not care. The commander didn't think another demon would come. He looked at the two of them arguing and asked if they were friends. Both were furious and simultaneously attacked the commander, but the commander was unharmed. Marbas and Nabrius both realized that this commander was very strong. 
But the commander put down his sword and said that he wanted to negotiate with the head of Diana's family to avoid further bloodshed. According to what was said before, today was the day Diana and her brother came to negotiate with the commander. However, her brothers had all committed suicide before, so Nabrius had to disguise himself as Diana's brother. This time, Marbas and Wisteria also went with them. Marbas disguises himself as a servant of the Black Bell family. They went to a flower garden to meet the commander. Marbas was surprised that the idiot Nabrius acted so well. The commander said that the queen asked them to destroy the Black Bell family because they did not complete their mission and assassinations kept happening. The commander thinks he can help the Black Bell family escape this situation, but on the condition that Diana must cancel all contracts with the demons in her family. Diana immediately objected. She did not want to live in pity, so if the royal family wanted war, she was ready. The negotiations ended in failure. The commander sent a signal to Snow, who was ambushing him on the way, so he could assassinate Diana. Snow's thoughts that the Black Bell family were not bad people and that Diana was the same age as Wisteria made him even more hesitant. The carriage was in range, Snow intentionally missed it and will return to the guild to confess. After returning to the mansion, Marbus said that he would not interfere, and observe their battle from afar. Both of them realized that Diana planned to die in this battle because the scent of the dying soul was very irresistible. She even gave all the servants a break so they wouldn't get caught up in the battle. That's what Nabrius liked about her. That night, as the enemy army approached the mansion, the two of them mentally prepared themselves. They thought that Marbus had taken Wisteria away, but unexpectedly, Wisteria was still at the castle. Wisteria says she doesn't want her friend to die. Marbus also came, surprising Nabrius. He said that because Wisteria was determined to stay, he had no choice. Marbus said he would protect Diana and Wisteria. He wanted Nabrius to hit that commander with all his might. The commander ignored Nabrius and rushed to attack Diana. Marbus immediately pushed him back with wind magic. The commander signaled his henchmen to open the iron cage. A woman stepped out, she was a Staroth, one of the thirteen Calamites of the Wasteland. She is rumored to have been killed by the Knights of the Sword Cross. She immediately rushed to attack Marbas and Nabrius and followed the commander's orders. Marbas grabbed her and asked her why she was on the human side. As it turns out, after Asteroth was captured, she was tortured and forced into a contract with Commander Saul Adams. While Marbas was caught off guard, she launched a feather at Diana but was stopped by a second demon with whom Diana had made a contract. Commander Saul raised his arm and burned Diana's mansion. She stood there bewildered, remembering the memories she had with her family there. Wisteria said that now that she has Nabrius always by her side, as long as she lives, the Black Bell family will not die. Commander Saul orders his subordinates to assassinate Diana. Nabrius ran to Diana but couldn't make it in time. She lay in Nabrius's arms and thanked him for always being by her side. Commander Saul completed his mission and planned to leave, but he did not expect that he had completely angered Nabrius. Marbus told Nabrius don't take it off, there's no coming back for that. Nabrius doesn't care and just wants to kill all his enemies. He breaks the necklace that restrains his powers and reveals his true form, the geological calamity. The knights continuously fired artillery shells at him, but to no avail. Commander Saul jumped up to attack but was immediately bitten by Nabrius. Wisteria tells Marbas that she can still hear the beating of Diana's heart. She can survive if she gets treatment. If Diana's alive, then her contract with Nabrius is still intact. That could be the key to stopping him. Commander Saul appears, surprising Marbas when his body can regenerate. He offers to work with Marbas to stop Nabrius's rampage. He orders Asteroth to take Diana back to camp for treatment. Marbus says that he needs to unleash the same power as Nabrius to stop him, and that Wisteria will be the key to helping him control that power. However, releasing their power would endanger both of them. But Wisteria did not hesitate and immediately agreed. She removed the ring on Marbus's tail to release his power. Immediately, the fire surrounded Wisteria. She heard Marbus calling and walked over to take his hand. Thanks to that, Marbus changed to another form without losing his reason. He rushed towards Nabrius and prepared to attack him. But it seems that Wisteria cannot completely help him control this power. Nabrius threw rocks at Wisteria, but luckily, Snow saved her in time. Wisteria focused her mind on searching deeper into the darkness. She found a staff that could help Marbus stabilize his powers. Marbus unleashed an infernal spear that struck Nabrius, knocking him down. However, Nabrius was still able to stand up as if nothing had happened. However, Nabrius was standing without being mad anymore. Wisteria guessed that Nabrius and Diana could still feel each other's connection inside right now. 
They need Nabrius to stay longer until Diana regains consciousness. But Wisteria was almost at her limit and vomited blood. Meanwhile, Diana had surgery to remove the bullet. She had a dream, talked to Nabrius, and was able to wake up. In order to prevent Nabrius from attacking the nearby village, Marbus created a giant wall of fire to block him, causing Wisteria to lose a lot of energy. At this time, Diana arrived and saw Nabrius going crazy, making her very sad. Marbus told her to focus her mind on finding the key inside Nabrius to stabilize his energy. Diana began to focus her will and enter the unknown world. Here, she meets her family members. Her brother walked up and gave her something. That is the key. Nabrius appears behind her and is glad she found it. Nabrius has returned to his normal form, making Diana very happy. However, Wisteria did not let her guard down because she saw Commander Saul coming. Saul is surprised that she can see him even though she is blind. Saul says he is a human, but when he was a boy, he encountered a three-eyed demon. The demon asks him do you have any wishes you'd like granted? Saul replied that he wanted to be the strongest of all, and as a result, he does not age, nor does he die. And the more he fights, the stronger he becomes. Marbas was extremely surprised because there's no price he could have paid equivalent to that. Nabrius said that if Saul could not die, then he would kill each of his subordinates. Hearing that, Saul immediately made a deal with Nabrius. He will report to the queen that Diana is dead and will argue for the restoration of the House of Black Bell's honor. At a seaport, two demons were talking to each other. This guy's name is Dantalion. He was bored with his current life and wanted dramatic battles, so he made a contract with a human. The remaining demon, named Citri, still doesn't know what to do with this boring life. After Commander Saul discovered that Snow had been hiding the truth about Wisteria, Snow was suspended from duty for a period of time. He returned to London to rest. Snow goes to a cafe to meet two friends from his time on the battlefield. The one-eyed boy's name is Luther, and the other man's name is Watson. After finishing the party, the three of them went home. But Snow senses something strange about Luther, so he stalks him. He pointed the gun and asked Luther why he went with the demons. Citri revealed his true form, introducing himself as one of the thirteen Calamites of the Wasteland. He also introduced Dentalion, who had made a pact with Luther. Luther's goal at this appointment is to capture Snow. Captain Teknami heard that Snow had not returned yet, so he worried and ran to find her. Snow woke up, and he was in a small room. Citri came over and asked him if he wanted to make a contract with him. Recently, he saw that the Calamites had all signed contracts with humans, which made him very curious. Meanwhile, Wisteria and Diana are having a picnic together in the Lake District. Marbus said that Wisteria was being targeted by many forces, so he came here to find Citri to borrow his mist incense Berber to help Wisteria disguise herself. Diana prepared quite a lot of food for this trip. Wisteria tells Diana to take her to the toilet and they accidentally meet Citri. Citri says that Snow is at his place. He asked Wisteria to release Marbas and form a new contract with him. Before he finished speaking, Nabrius and Marbas rushed to intervene in his conversation. Citri transformed into his true form. Marbas wants to borrow Citri's mist incense Berber, but Citri says he lent it to Dantalion. Citri gave Wisteria the necklace Snow often wore and asked who she would choose between Marbas and Snow. Meanwhile, Teknami is looking for Snow when he sees a purple mist. Luther and Dantalion were waiting for him to enter the place. People outside will not be able to see anything when they are inside the fog created by the mist incense Berber. Although Luther was slashed in the leg by Teknami, he did not feel any pain and continued the fight. Dantalion stood nearby, excitedly watching their battle. He won't interfere and will continue to enjoy it. One of Teknami's subordinates rushed into the mist and shot Luther down. Dantalion was very angry because that night had interrupted his fun. Just as he was about to destroy that night, Teknami rushed in to block Dantalion's attack, injuring him to the point of unconsciousness. At this time, Wisteria said that she would not choose but would go save her brother. Citri laughed at her answer and left. The four of them then took a train back to London and parted ways there. Marbas said he couldn't help her intervene in this matter. Wisteria also understands this and says she will ask a famous detective for help. Everywhere in London, many people are haunted by demons. These are caused by Citri and Dantalion. Wisteria is searching for the detective's whereabouts, even though it's raining. Marbas noticed that Wisteria seemed to have matured compared to before. Watson runs over and says he's close to the detective's apartment, so he'll help her. Citri suddenly appeared and applied a scent to Wisteria's body that attracted those possessed by demons. Watson was scared, picked up Wisteria, and ran away. Wisteria calls for Marbas' help. 
Marbas immediately appeared and defeated all the possessed people. Citri was angry when Marbas interfered in his affairs. Other demons have made contracts with humans, making him feel abandoned. Citri also brought another high-ranking demon. It possessed Teknami's body. Seeing the high-level demon, Marbas carried Wisteria and ran away. Although the Kalamites are very strong, 90% of their power is sealed, so they are no match for Teknami and Citri. Wisteria says she will release the seal on him. She removed the ring from his tail, surprising Citri and Dantalion. They couldn't believe that a human could withstand the power of a calamity, something only their master can do. Citri rushed to attack Wisteria and was injured by Marba's fire swords. Wisteria reached the limit of her endurance and fell down. Teknami took this opportunity to rush to attack Marba's, but he stopped when he saw Snow's necklace. Marba's immediately carried Wisteria and ran away. Citri blocked their path and laughed loudly, but Commander Saul suddenly appeared and cut off one of his wings. He knew that Snow was being experimented on by Citri, so he angrily tortured him. Dantalion watching nearby uses the Mist Incense Berber to save Citri. At this moment, Snow is in great pain because his body is being invaded by demons. Meanwhile, Teknami suggested teaming up with Commander Saul to destroy Marbas. Commander Saul knew that this was a bad move but there was no other way. Marbas angrily cuts the ground in half and says that humans are arrogant. They were given power by demons and thought it was theirs. He transformed into calamity form and showed off his power in front of them. He says he doesn't want to fight right now and is just trying to help Wisteria save Snow. Teknami also said goodbye to Commander Saul and left. The next morning, Wisteria woke up. She wanted to continue looking for Snow but she still hadn't fully recovered. Watson brings Detective Sherlock Holmes. He immediately stared at Wisteria and saw that she had been pushing herself recently, causing her body to tire. Even though he didn't see demons, he guessed Marbas was here and wanted to talk to him. Marbas shows up himself to talk to him. Sherlock Holmes believes that there is a demon that has the ability to hide certain areas from human perception. Its power makes it impossible for them to find snow. Sherlock tells them the location he suspects. Marbas immediately went to the location Sherlock had mentioned. Dantalion and Luther are arriving and will see Marbas here. They were surprised that Marbas was able to find them. Dantalion informed Marbas that they were about to destroy the Sword Cross Knights. But Marbas doesn't care. He wants to bring snow back so Wisteria won't be sad anymore. But Luther said that he had turned snow into a demon and it was too late to save him. Marbas angrily rushed forward and punched Dantalion in the face. Dantalion was very excited about this battle. He rushed to attack and pushed Marbas back. The battle between two great demons made Luther very excited. He saw the excitement on Dantalion's face and remembered the day he returned home. He has lost his memory and cannot remember anyone in his family, making him feel estranged from them. Then Dantalion appeared and liked Luther's personality so much that he made a contract with him. Marbas sees Dantalion and Luther's bond is similar to that of himself and Wisteria. In the moment of distraction, he was caught by Dantalion. Dantalion broke one of Marbas's horns, causing him to lose his balance. Demon's horns have the function of circulating power, and Marbas will not be able to recover in a short time. But he doesn't want to give up because if he doesn't save Snow, Wisteria will be very sad. He continued to rush to attack Dantalion and had his remaining horn broken. Luckily, Nabarius appeared to save Marbas from danger. In the park, Nabarius wants to know what Marbas will say when he sees Wisteria again. Marbas replied that he would do the same as Nabarius did when Diana lost her family. He said that he had helped Diana and Nabarius before, so he asked them to help him this time. The next day, Marbas returned home and immediately took Wisteria away. He said he would take her sightseeing today. Wisteria took his hand and asked, Has Snow been turned into a demon? Marbas told her everything. However, Wisteria still wanted to meet her brother. Meanwhile, Dantalion and Luther are chatting when they are attacked by the Sword Cross. But Luther and Dantalion are still safe because many soldiers cannot see demons. Commander Saul tells them to target him as he fights. He rushed forward and cut off one of Dantalion's arms. Dantalion tells Luther to run while he stops Saul. He picked up an axe and threw it at the soldiers while Luther was being chased. Luther and Dantalion are having fun fighting together. But Luther was hit and said goodbye to Dantalion. But Dantalion didn't want Luther to die so he activated Calamity's power and gave his key to Luther in the mental world. Dantalion has removed his power seal. Commander Saul orders the soldiers to evacuate the residence. He will stay to stop the demons. He rushed to attack Luther and realized that he had become stronger. It turns out that Dantalion has activated morale control. He can explosively amplify his own army's strength while at the same time eroding the enemy's will to fight. 
The Antalian creates an axe that cuts Commander Saul in two and creates a rain of swords to kill the soldiers. When Dantalian was about to kill Lucia, Saul recovered in time to stop him. He tells Lucia to save the survivors. She was very scared but trusted Commander Saul, so she quickly left. Dantalian had no intention of sparing her and was about to throw the axe, but was stopped by Marbas. Navarius and Marbas broke the laws of demons to save a human. Luther had reached the limit of his endurance, so Dantalian took him away. Saul was surprised that a demon like Marbas was protecting humans. Meanwhile, Citri's plan to destroy the Sword Cross is being carried out. Many demons have surrounded the headquarters of the Sword Cross. When Commander Saul is not present, Deputy Commander Iberta directs everyone. Demons have attacked the northern first floor entrance. They were very surprised when Teknami turned into a demon. Iberta ordered the place to be blown up. However, Dantalian used his body to shield them. Iberta intends to fight them head on. Asteroth also participated in the battle. She transformed into her demon form and released feathers. She takes advantage of her flying ability to dodge Teknami's attacks. Iberta took advantage of Teknami's vulnerability and rushed to stab him. But Teknami quickly recovered. Asteroth rushed forward and cut off Teknami's arm and horn, causing him to fall down in pain. Luther rushed to attack Iberta, causing his old wound to bleed. Iberta tried to counterattack but was pushed away by Dantalian. This reminds Iberta of the past. One time, Iberta and her teammates were hunting demons and met Saul. Their demon power measuring device discovered that Saul possessed the power of demons. They continuously rushed to attack Saul but his wounds healed extremely quickly. They continued to attack Saul until they were exhausted, while Saul remained unharmed. Saul tells Iberta that he wants to join the Sword Cross so he can destroy the demon who made him immortal. Iberta asked him to take off his helmet. She saw that Saul was still a boy, so she accepted him into the Sword Cross and taught him. Very quickly, Saul became commander of the Sword Cross. Back to the present, Asteroth is still coordinating very well with Iberta to fight and defend. Luther felt it was taking too much time, so he released the power seal on Dantalian. Wisteria is on her way to the Sword Cross and senses something bad is happening. Commander Saul is very worried about Iberta's safety and prays for her. Iberta and Asteroth were no match for Dantalian when his power was unleashed. When Luther was about to finish off Iberta, Teknami regained some motivation and rushed to push Luther. Iberta was glad that Teknami was still human. She asked Asteroth to take Teknami out of this place. She plans to die with Luther and Dantalian. Commander Saul saw many demons gathering at the headquarters. Wisteria guessed that Citri used scent to attract demons. Saul begs for their help to destroy the scent. Barbas did not want to, but agreed. Inside the basement, Iberta showed them a large amount of explosives she had hidden. Saul is trying to run to Iberta's place. Iberta is the only one who recognizes him as a normal human being. But it was all too late, in front of him was a huge explosion. The four of them were entering the forest when they saw Citri holding a scent jar. Wisteria can sense Snow's presence, but he is no longer human. Citri says that Snow has turned into a demon and has made a contract with him. Thanks to that connection, Citri was also able to release his sealed power. Suddenly, Wisteria fainted and woke up in the city of London. Citri appears and says that this is a world created from her memories. But the special thing is that in this world, everyone hates her and wants to kill her. Every time she dies, she will return to her original place. A day in this world is only a few seconds in the real world. Having finished speaking, he disappeared. Wisteria walked around the city and looked in the mirror. She guessed that Citri created this world based on Snow's memories because she didn't know many things like that in London. She wanted to search for Snow in this world, so she went to the Sword Cross, but was interpreted as a demon and killed. At this time, Marbas and Nabrius teamed up together but still could not defeat Snow. Citri laughed at them and continued into the dream world to meet Wisteria. Several years have passed in this world. Citri did not expect that Wisteria would not collapse but would grow stronger. In the past few years, she has experienced many deaths but still did not give up trying to find Snow. She found the house where she and Snow lived when they were children. Here she finds the doll that Snow once gave her. Suddenly a voice rang out, a demon with Snow's voice appeared, calling her. The demon says he knows all of Snow's past. He tells her all the things Snow has been through. Previously, Snow had sold himself into slavery to earn money to take care of his sister and mother. He was brutally exploited for his labor. Until he extremely hated the landlord, a demon appeared to help him burn down that mansion. While Snow was very excited, Teknami came to destroy that demon. Teknami invited Snow to join the Sword Cross and promised to let him return home later. But when Snow returns home, he hears that Wisteria has been kidnapped. Every day, Snow searched for her, but she chose to stay by Marba's side. The demon got mad and attacked her. 
Listeria is certain that the demon is not her brother because Snow would never act like that. The demon was about to finish her off when suddenly he stopped. Snow outside is also having a headache. Wisteria realized the cause was this doll. As long as she can defeat this demon, she can save Snow. She called out Marbus's name with the utmost determination. Thanks to that, Marbus can teleport into the dream world. He immediately destroyed the demon to save Snow. Citri is angry that his plan was foiled. He took Marbus to the world of his memories. He asked Marbus if he remembered his master. So much time has passed that Marbus can't remember his master's face clearly. Citri said that their master had powers comparable to what they wield now and they are his students. He saw potential in them. The authorities at the time gave him land, which meant they had a home. But great power breeds fear and hatred. The peace didn't last long, and they, his students, were all killed. He was overcome with hatred and remade their souls into demons. In the process, he became the avatar of his curses. The three-eyed demon, as everyone has come to call him, Citri hates Marbas because he has forgotten his master. He uses illusions to torture Wisteria's mind. Marbas released his power and rushed to punch Citri in the face. He admits that there may come a day when he forgets Citra's face as well. Wisteria is likely no exception, either, but the memories and emotions he experienced with Wisteria will always exist. Citri felt bored and ended everything here. He returned to the previous lake to sleep. Marbas returned to the real world to find that Snow had returned to normal. However, it's not over yet. After the terrible explosion, Luther woke up and was still safe because Dantalion had shielded him. Warbas and Wisteria arrived to fight. Both Calamites broke the power seal and rushed to fight. Luther has always wanted a fight with Snow. Snow knocked Luther down but hesitated without shooting. Warbas created a large hell spear to attack Dantalion, putting Wisteria under great pressure. Dantalion shouted and continued to break the limits of his power. He spits arrows of darkness at Wisteria. Luckily, Nabarius arrived in time to save her. Diana also released the limits of Nabarius' power to aid Marbas. Nabarius will attract Dantalion's attention, and Marbas will deliver the killing blow. Wisteria grabbed Marbas's hand and said she could still continue. At this time, Commander Saul and his soldiers arrived to support them. Dantalion was about to reach his limit and was about to unleash his ultimate blow. Marbas with Wisteria's trust. He flew up, creating a giant spear of hell and piercing Dantalion's arrow of darkness. The enveloping fire burned Dantalion, causing him to scream in pain. At the end of it all, Dantalion said a few things to Luther and disappeared. Wisteria was also exhausted and fainted. Days later, the Sword Cross began repairing the city. Luther has woken up and forgotten all his memories. Marba's group is having a fun picnic. They plan to go find the three-eyed demon together. The commander owes them a favor, so he lets Snow go with them.